a lower or should that be two lowers? The anamorphic look is oh so trendy right now. If it was a high beast post, it would have so many of those little tiny little hype flames, it would cause one huge ass hype flame, which would be great for anamorphic flares. If you don't know much about the anamorphic look, the flare is the big draw. Think a monumental buttock sized line of light that stretches from one side of the frame to the other. The other big attraction is the oval bokeh that looks like it's had its bokeh balls crushed in a vice. What the lens is actually like, probably not too much of a concern, but for the sake of prolonging watch time, I'm going to talk about it anyway before we get to the balls and the lines. First things first, these things are small ish, well, compared to other anamorphic lenses, and that's why some clever person at the Lauer name deciding department decided to call these things, with the help of a cunningly placed N, nanomorphs. Although if I'm being picky, the size doesn't really warrant nano classification. Still, the size is perfectly formed for those who don't want to carry a wang of a lens just to get the anamorphic look. For mirrorless, it makes the balance really good with all three available lenses weighing in at around 300 something grams. It should make them less of a pain in the poo pipe to balance on the gimbal and you can take flight with them. On the drone, I don't mean you can take it on a plane, of course you can take it on a plane. At the moment, they are available in 27, 35 and 50 millimeter focal lengths. Kind of a bit odd because 27 and 35 are quite close. With 27 and 35, why would you buy both of them at the same time? But anyway, what do I know? I don't run a lens company, do I? Bill Conti seems pretty good. It's all metal. Well, not completely all metal. Metal lens elements just wouldn't work really, would they? Aperture info and distance scale are paint in shallowish engraving, whereas the branding and the focal length and max aperture is just printed on. Distance scale is read on the top of the lens, not like the series which have distance scale on both sides of lenses. But I guess they design this lens for people who can't afford to pay for somebody to sit next to you and focus your lens for you. Still, that means there won't be anyone else to point out the fact that the rings aren't totally perfect. I mean, if you listen to this, these are pre-release versions, so hopefully the ones that people get from Indiegogo will be better than this one. But the rings on the 50mm review unit that I've got, sounds like they've been lubricated with Polywatch. Not totally smooth. The 27mm is totally fine though. I must reiterate that this is just a pre-release review unit, but still, reviewers, they're the ones that bitch about on YouTube, aren't they? The rings have 0.8 pitch gearing, which is industry standard stuff, but if you're not going to put anything on them and you can use your fingers to focus and change aperture, then at least they're comfortable enough. It doesn't feel like you're being impaled by your own ring. Otherwise, what is there to add? 15 elements and 13 groups, 13 aperture blades, and oh, there's a little thing here for adjusting back focus, because you might need to. They are 1.5 times anamorphic, kind of in between series 1.33 times and 1.6 times. I don't expect the bokeh to be too elongated because series 1.6 times aren't incredibly elongated either. But most likely won't disappoint with the flaring because even filters and add-on phone lenses can do the same thing now. Interestingly, like the Polar Pro Mavic 3 anamorphic style filters, Laura is offering blue and gold flaring options. The only negative is that it's not just a matter of swapping different filters in a la Polo Pro. You need to buy another lens. You need to choose the amber or blue version. Personally, I prefer the amber flaring for daylight or flares, natural light, and blue flaring for artificial lights. It would have been smashing if you could have had one lens that changed between the two. I don't really fancy buying two different lenses, but there you go. You have to buy either the blue version or the amber version. With the flaring, the 50mm is a bit more pronounced. Both lenses cope quite well with bright light being shone straight down the barrel of the lens. The Series 75mm I was using for some B-rolls suffers from some not too pleasing ghosting when the light is shone straight at it. It makes it look like my LED light has died and is trying to possess the C70 or something. The Lowers are better controlled with the flaring. I couldn't get them to ghost as easily as I could with the Series 75mm. The Lowers still provide good contrast too. If you want the anamorphic flare, the 50mm is going to give you plenty of it, although one thing I noticed with these shots was how wonky it made my kitchen cabinets look. It's got pincushion distortion, which is more pronounced on the 27mm, which if you're taking video of things of straight lines, like test charts, it's going to be quite noticeable. And if that is your favourite kind of subject, the sharpness, wide open for both lenses, just alright. At f5.6 you'll get some decently sharp shots. Wide open produces a slightly softer look. It works fine for people shots. Razor sharp details aren't always flattering on faces. The Series 75mm seems sharper but I shouldn't really compare them because it's not really like for like full frame lens, full frame body, 
But just FYI, the Series 75mm I was using is sharper. But still, it could be argued that if you're in it for the flaring and the weird shaped bokeh, the number one priority probably isn't sharpness. Well, the flaring's covered, the bokeh looks fine, the out of focus bits are smooth on the 50 compared to the 27mm, and both show a little bit of swirly goodness towards the edges of the frame. You don't get supremely elongated bokeh bits, but it still looks different in shape to non anamorphic bokeh. If you're not after subtle effects, then at least you can still rely on the flaring to give you that anamorphic flex. Breathing looks like that. Close up focusing is quite decent for anamorphic. The 27mm focus is the closest of them all, but they're all well within one meter, which is pretty good. And their promo stuff says that the anamorphic squeeze ratio is constant throughout, i.e., the squeeze ratio doesn't change on close up focusing. It apparently makes the subject like they've got mumps, and you wouldn't want that to happen because that's the worst disease you could possibly get as a filmmaker. So that's really all you need to know about these anamorphics from Lara. Small, does the job, performs well enough. Oh, and they're available in a whole load of different mounts. Modern series available on Indiegogo right now. Link down there, not affiliate link. But if you do want to help support this channel and you want to start a website or online store, you can take a free trial with Squarespace and 10% off your first order. It's easy peasy to set up a website, loads of templates, and 24 7 customer service. You can't go wrong. Give it a try. Link below. Thanks for watching. See ya.